The Supreme Court is making headlines this morning, not because of any one case, but because Justice Clarence Thomas spoke up in court. He hasn't done that for years. Jan Crawford is in Washington. Jan, good morning. Well, good morning, Charlie. You know, when the justices hear arguments in cases, it can be really intense. I and mean, they're just throwing questions at the lawyers or interrupting each other. It is rapid fire. They're all engaged. All of them except one. Justice Thomas usually sits silent. In the Supreme Court, it's become the stuff of legend. Clarence Thomas, the silent justice. While the other justices mix it up, Thomas rarely speaks. It's been almost seven years since he asked a question from the bench. But Monday, Thomas broke his silence, sort of, when he interrupted the more flamboyant Justice Antonin Scalia in a case about whether Ivy League lawyers had properly represented a client. The transcript picked up only four words of his remarks. Well, he did not. What Thomas appeared to be suggesting was that an Ivy League degree didn't necessarily mean the lawyer was qualified, and the courtroom erupted in laughter, perhaps knowing Thomas has had a testy relationship with his alma mater, Yale Law School. It wasn't a question, but even the offhand remark from Thomas was considered by court watchers to be big news. The 64-year-old justice has often said the court should do a better job listening to the lawyers presenting the cases instead of interrupting them, a stark contrast to some of his more vocal colleagues like Scalia. Thomas says his public silence goes back a long way. In his memoir, he wrote he didn't like speaking up in college because he was self-conscious about his unusual southern Georgia dialect. My mother packed our bags. In 2007, Steve Croft of 60 Minutes asked Thomas about why he's still so quiet. The perception is where the critics will say it's because you're not smart enough or you're, you're too insecure or you're afraid of making a <laughs> fool out of yourself. Well, they make fools out of themselves with those kind of comments. Justice Marshall rarely asks questions. Justice Powell rarely asks questions. That's a personal preference. I certainly wouldn't do it to provide histrionics for uh, the media gallery or for other people or for critics. Critics will always be critics. Now, I've also talked with Justice Thomas about his silence, and he's actually been critical of his colleagues for what he says, talking too much. He says they can be disrespectful to the lawyers and sound like, as he told me one time, family feud. That was his words. He says that he just prefers to speak through the written word in his powerful opinions and dissents. And you know, Charlie and Nora, he also does a lot of speaking to law schools, to students, where uh, he goes on and on and is quite personable when you talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, as you could see also from that Steve Croft interview. He does make a lot of speeches. What does he like to talk about when he makes those speeches? What's his subject in public? You know, he likes to inspire. I mean, he has this very unusual background. He's the only Southerner on the court. He's the only African-American. He grew up in poverty in the segregated South under Jim Crow. So he really has this compelling, different personal story. So he likes to talk to students to say, look, you can do this. And on the bench, Charlie, when he's asked questions before, it often, not surprisingly, too, is in cases involving race. And again, that's probably uh, not surprising because of his background. I remember one of his more powerful moments when he asked a question in an oral argument was in this 2002. It was a cross burning case, and the other justices were suggesting that cross burning was protected by the First Amendment. And Thomas, he just could not, at some point, it's like he couldn't stand anymore. He jumped in and he suggested, You guys are not appreciating what mm -hmm. cross burning can phase, what a threat, the reign of terror is, is the words that he used. And then he ended up eventually writing a dissent in that case when the other justices said it was protected. Mm, Jan Crawford, thank you. Good to see you.